Hi, I'm Nicola, and this is New York in Yellow Shoes. Today, we're talking about the torch of the Statue of Liberty. But before we start, remember, subscribe to my channel and activate the bell. Ready? Let's go! I tell you, I was there. No, you're wrong. Trust me. I've been up and down many there. times. I I've been there to watch when I was a kid. I tell I you, I was there. there. But driving me insane. Everybody sing the beam to the torch. I've climbed the torch. Trust me, I was with my dad, with my grandma. But if I read the news, they say the access to the torch has been blocked since 1916. So. Am I crazy, or are these people crazy? One of the most diffused memories is people went through a spiral staircase and finally emerged to the top of the torch. Well, if this is what they're saying, they're lying. They're lying for one simple, easy reason. In order to access the top of the torch, you're actually going through a 42 feet tall ladder and it's a very very narrow space and it's easy to know why you know the width of the right arm of the statue of liberty is only 12 feet 3.66 meters and most of that inner space is occupied by gustav eiffel's steel frame which holds the statue in place because we always have to remember that the Statue of Liberty is composed by 309 sheets of copper assembled together, plus the arm, the torch, and the head. So, you see, the inside of the Statue of Liberty is full of stuff. And in such a small space, 12 feet, there is actually no room for a spiral staircase. They're right up to the point they're considering ascending to the top of the statue, I mean the crown, because in order to reach the crown, you actually have to go all the way up through a spiral staircase. It's 162 steps. But if you have to climb the top of the torch, at a certain point, you have to leave the spiral staircase and access a different way. It is more or less at the height of the elbow of the statue. The letter starts from here and goes all the way up here. So, all these people who told you I've been to the top of the torch and I did it through a spiral staircase have a false memory. They've probably been to the crown, they have looked at the torch, they have imagined how great the view might have been up to the point that projecting their fantasy over and over again, it became a reality. If you've actually been to the very top of the torch, the only way you could have is by climbing a 42 feet tall ladder. And that's the truth. These people are not necessarily crazy. You know, people's memory can be deceiving at times. So much deceiving, you may remember things that have happened in a certain way, in a total different way. Here's an example. A few weeks ago, I was at a social gathering, always social distancing, of course, and uh, a friend came out with a memory. He clearly remembered that the final scene of Frank Capra's A Wonderful Life showed the man who pushed James Stewart to total desperation, showed up at his place, freeing him from his financial burden. He was so positive about that memory that he ended up convincing everybody in the room. That was the actual finale. Well, everyone except myself. He insisted, he insisted, and everybody told me, hey, hey, he's so positive, how can he be wrong? You know what? Somehow, I managed to get a, the final scene online. And when he saw it, he was absolutely shocked. How could it be so wrong? Well, you know what? There are so many things 
that really put that false memory in his brain. First of all, it's a wonderful life. It's actually a wonderful movie. But most of all, it's a Christmas movie. And everybody is good at Christmas. There is no doubt about it. Second, and most important, especially in the last 20 years, that man's name is, actually was, Henry Potter. Henry Potter. So, 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 so similar to Harry Potter, the teenage wizard who defeats Voldemort, defeating evil once and for all. So, you know, if you connect the dots, it is very easy to twist your memory. And it's very easy for your memory to be twisted when it comes to the Statue of Liberty. But, you know, there are very important news sites saying that that cannot be true in the first place, because the access to the torch has been blocked since 1916. So, <laughs> we have to conclude that all these people are absolutely, absolutely crazy, locos, Doidos, Patsy. Well, no, they're not. How <laughs> come they're not? Well, it's a strange story. Okay, it's not a simple story to be told. They're right. Something happened in 1916, which led to the closing of the access to the torch. What happened is that on the early hours of the morning of July 30th, 1916, there was a very violent explosion in the nearby Black Tom Island. People say it was because of German spies that were against the American involvement in World War I. Some other people said it was a group of five pacifists, some Germans and some Americans, and if so, it would have been the first and only time that Germany and the US were allied together in a world war, but whatever the reason and whoever these people were, there was actually a very serious explosion near Black Tom Island. Black Tom Island was a very small island off the coast of New Jersey. It had a very big building that used to be a warehouse storing all the bullets, weapons and ammunition to be used by the American army in Europe. So, that explosion virtually destroyed all the equipment the U.S. Army had for the war. The explosion was so violent that it produces damages for almost $20 million. $20 million in 1916. Can you believe it? And right now you're watching pictures taken from the July 31st edition of the New York Times. So many damages. Even Ellis Island had damages for $75,000, and six of the over 600 people present were heavily injured. And how about the statue? Before I tell you about the statue, let me remind you this. The explosion was so violent that bullets started to scatter all around the New York Harbor. There were houses around the Times Square district five miles from the explosion, whose windows were broken because of these randomly flying bullets. Can you believe the Black Tom incident was something outrageous, dangerous, terrible, caused a lot of damages, and some people died as well. How about the statue? The statue was damaged, and the damage amounted to $100,000. What you're seeing right now is a picture of the scars the statue still bears after that time. When people started to intervene to repair and contain those damages, it seems they found something very odd. The assembling of the statue had gone wrong in that particular space. In fact, it seems that the statue was assembled 18 inches off center. Long story short, repairing the statue could have actually been more dangerous than leaving it as it was. So, a first precaution was blocking the access to the torch. Okay, 
So it's impossible to access the torture since 1916. So all these people are lying or are crazy. Actually, no. You know how I know it? Because one day, as I was leading some people to the Statue of Liberty, you probably know by now that I'm a tour guide, one of my guests kept telling me he had actually been to the top of the torch. And I started telling him, well, sir, probably you're not remembering it the correct way. But I actually tell him that it was hallucinating. But he kept insisting. And at a certain point, he said something that really surprised me. He said, I clearly remember how difficult it was to access the balcony because of the door. And you know what? He was right, because the door leading to the balcony of the torch is actually, actually very short. It's something more or less like that. You can see it, because if you access the Museum of the Statue of Liberty, you can find the original torch, which was replaced in the mid-80s. And you can see how short the door is. So, how the hell could he know? Since, uh, according to his own story, he hadn't been to the island for about 40 years. During the break, what I did was going to the information center and actually asking the question. You know, my sources say the access has been blocked since 1916, but this gentleman insists it's been right there. Was he a rascal? Is he actually telling the truth? Can you help me? Unfortunately, the lady who was there was a lady who had been working on that site for a very, very long time, and she knows the story. And she said, actually, you know what? When Charlie DeLeo was attending the Statue of Liberty, sometimes if conditions were optimal, if the weather was fine, if the humidity was good, if there were not too many people, and mostly if you were at the right place at the right time, he might have granted you access to the top of the torch. Boy, this man was right. And uh, a few words about Charlie DeLeo. Charlie DeLeo is universally known as the Keeper of the Flame. From 1972 to 1997, for 25 long years, he's been the man who has been taking care of the Statue of Liberty, climbing on a daily basis to the top of the torch, making sure the light bulbs were working, cleaning the amber glass and doing all the necessary repairs. Since 1997 up to today, the keeper of the flame is another man. The man's name is Louis, and I know that man very well, having been to the statue almost 800 times. That man is a sweetheart. He's a man who loves his job. He's always happy when people show up at the statue. He spends his days thanking people for showing up, and sometimes if you're lucky enough to spend a few minutes with him, he will tell you beautiful, beautiful stories. I have so many I look forward to sharing with you in another video. But thanks to this, and thanks to the information I received through this lady, I was able to notice that actually some of these people have been to the top of the torch. Well, actually, those who have really been there are probably way less than all of those who say they have been. It's just like John Macro saying, in my long career, I've heard so many people saying they were in Wimbledon Centre Court during the 1980 final. They say, I've heard at least 60,000 people <laughs> telling me that. You know what's the point? The maximum capacity for the Wimbledon Center Court was 18,000. So, another example of how memory can be deceiving. But anyway, that's what we know. 1916, the Black Tom incident. Since then, access has been very, very restricted. Nevertheless, some people had the opportunity to climb to the top of the torch. The Statue of Liberty actually has a torch. 
The torch we see today is no longer the original one. The original one was replaced in the mid-80s during the restoration for the centennial of the monument. Why was it replaced? It was replaced because it was in a very, very bad shape. The torch had been modified, the original one. From its original design, copper was taken away from the flame, being replaced by amber glass. The reason is that the Statue of Liberty, for a brief period of time, actually became a lighthouse. Inside the flame, there were up to 12 incandescent lamps. The problem is that the lamps made a huge amount of heat, and the amber glass was assembled so badly that there were big gaps in between what remained of the copper to hold the amber glass and the amber glass itself. So, given the hot temperature and the rain that went through that gap, in a very few weeks, that torch turned into a big, gigantic piece of rust. That's the reason why the lighthouse was shut down and it stayed like that. So, when it was time to restore the statue for its centennial, they decided to replace the original torch, which once again can be seen inside the Museum of the Statue of Liberty, and put another one, which was an exact faithful reproduction of Bartholdi's original design. And, by the way, the flame is 24 carat gold leaf. Okay, so there is this torch. It's the second one, but it looks like how the original one used to look. In order to access the top of the torch, you have to go through the spiral staircase, more or less as far as the armpit. Then you have to hit another hallway, and at a certain point, at the height of her elbow, there is a ladder 42 feet tall. Once you get to the top of it, there is a very, very short door. Only an eight-year-old kid could pass through it standing. And if you went through all of this, you are finally admitted to the balcony of the Statue of Liberty. It's a height of 300 feet. Those people are not crazy. For a series of reasons, their memories play a bad trick on them. And some of them are telling some other people's stories. In general, we can say that even today, in 2020, access to the top of the torch is blocked. But every now and then, once in a while, there are some lucky people who, under certain conditions, may actually access that fabulous spot. Am I one of them? No. I wish I were. Probably one day I will. Until then, I'm Nicola. This is New York in Yellow Shoes. Remember to subscribe to our channel, activate the bell, and till next one. Bye bye! <laughs>